Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another thrilling episode of Prog Review. And today we're talking about Gordon Haskell's, I think it's his second solo album. It is and it isn't. There you go. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, um, poor old Gordon, he's passed on. On the 16th of October, he left. He checked out. And uh, and I thought, well, I thought we'll do that. We'll cover this one, seeing as you know he's not here anymore. It's like a tribute sort of thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, sort of a tribute. But yeah, I mean, oh, how how do we phrase it? I have to be so careful with what I say. Um, for most of us. For most of us, he uh, we know him via so this one. You, if you know, if you know where I'm, you know why I'm picking my words. We know him from that band, and he sung on that album. From yeah, that album. <laughs> he was on that. He was with that band on that album that he sung on. Well, he sung on two. He was on one album and then another. He was on... Appeared on two of those albums by that band. And, yeah, I mean... Oh, again, he, had a, he, he came to, pro, to prominence in... Well, when would it have been? Uh, the, 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 the millennia, wasn't it? 2000 and, 2001? Yeah. Was it 2000? So I can't even remember myself. I was leading myself into a, an anecdote, an anecdote. But um, I mean, I suppose he's probably famous for nearly having a nearly having a, a number one single. Uh, yeah, it was two thousand and one. Just double checking my own because I'm trying to remember because the day the single came out it was a it was a Monday, the week before Christmas or something. I bought it. I went into Woolworths and I bought it. And I went to work and I got made redundant. <laughs> so that is my endearing memory of how wonderful you are. I didn't feel very wonderful at the time. Uh, yeah, and, and Haskell came in at number two, beaten by Robbie Williams, I believe. Um, so, yeah, but before that, I mean, it had... What, what did he do after that band? He, he, had a, he had, well, he had this album that we're going to talk about. It is and it isn't. And it, it it worked with loads of loads of people, you know, as a doing various musical things. I think we worked with Cliff Richard and and people like that. So, but but I would say was it success? Commercial success eluded him. I I came across his album Amble, Ambledon Hill in a bargain bin, um, probably about a month after it was released. Uh, and I found a promo copy of it, which I bought for ninety nine p. It was out the back, out the back of um, Sounds Familiar in Wood Street, Walthamstow, and uh, I got it for a quid. And I knew him because of that band, and I like that album. I thought that album was a good album. Um, but this album, I remember, it was on E Music back in the day, so I, I downloaded it, and um, and it's it's it's. I guess he did it just after being in that band. Got a deal with Armour Erdogan of Atlantic Records on the strength of uh, like he did a, 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 a promo in front of him in his office, and got a, got a deal with Atlantic Records, and it's really it's a really curious album because it was produced by Arif Mardan and he's a very famous Turkish producer. He's been he worked with you name him, he worked with them, you know, uh, Bee Gees, George Benson, Midler. Uh, Queen, David Bowie, worked with many, many people, and here he is producing a really obscure record in 1971 by Gordon Haskell called It Is and It Isn't. And the other curious thing about the record is who is on the record with him, who, who performs with him? John Wetton. Before he ended up in that band, uh, Wetton's on here playing bass, organ, and doing harmony vocals, um, and it is again when you hear this, 
it's one of those peculiar things where you think, how did he get the record deal? You know, I mean, because it's it's not that it's a bad record. It's it's I have a conflicting. I mean, if you listen to it, it's very pleasant. It's um, I guess you call it almost it's almost middle of the road, easy listening. It's very it's because again, um, Hasquiz is very soothing, laconic vocal style. It's very laid back. It's a very intimate record, you know. It's very, it's very, you feel very close to it. But there it is. It's put out by Atlantic Records, produced by Arif Mardan, and it sounds on. If you if you didn't take any notice of the words, it sounds like a, you know, like I said, a kind of very soulful, middle of the road, very you know, record. But then the lyrics are just very left field. Talking, you know, saying stories about worms and spiders and nature and you know and <laughs> getting away from everything, and it's kind of the opposite to um, you know to what you'd expect, which is kind of it's a good thing. That's a that's a that's a bonus thing about it. Um, uh, again, it must be good because I remembered it. I hadn't listened to it in years. I listened to it on the walk, and it came back to me. Funny thing around this time around is I was thinking, wow, it really sounds like um, a couple of the, one of the tracks. I don't think I, again, I should write this down. I don't think it was could be or upside down. It might be upside down. It sounds like a Hollow Man from Marillion. He has a, Steve Hogarth has some of his vocal phrasings in this, you know. When he does the more quiet, subdued, Marillion stuff, and that really, that really stuck out. It really stuck out to me. Um, but you can see why it didn't sell. <laughs> you can see why, because it, it is one of those things. It's a, it's a cult album. You know, it's it's not bad. It's not a bad record. It's just there's nothing on this record that jumps out that makes you go. You know that. You know that's a, that, that would normally stick. There are no hooks. It's not hooky. Well, it is hooky, but it's not overtly hooky. It's not a uh, you know. There's there's no there's no singles on here. There's no there's no hits on here. It's just a very pleasant record. Very well recorded. Lovely music, you know. <laughs> but there's just something so left field about it, and that's what I find intriguing, because you know this it wouldn't get it would you wouldn't get recorded it wouldn't get recorded or released you know normally but obviously uh, Arm Erdogan saw something in Haskell again Arm Erdogan was a great champion of of yes back in the day very big um very big name in in, in Atlantic records i mean crikey when he when he died led zeppelin reformed didn't they and to for their tribute concert that's how big he was so he must have he must have believed in Haskell, um, but yeah, again, it's one of those records you might might have passed you by because again, it's it's been long out of print. I know that I don't know if it was voice print or one of those one of those um, places reissued it in the early nineties, and like I said, eMusic had the the digital version which I've got back in the day. But yeah, it's it's one of those records that could have easily passed you by. Is it prog? It's got kind of weird prog sensibility. And again, the last the, the last tracks on both sides, when I lose and when I laugh, are very short. They're barely twenty seconds long, and again, it's it's a, it's a peculiar record. But it has a charm too. It's got it's got it's what it lacks in hooks and an immediacy. It it has in lots bags of charm. It's got a lot of charm to it. And it's a real shame that Haskell, you know, didn't get more success. But then he wasn't. I don't think that was his aim. He was a he's a, he's, a, he's one of those pure musicians. He's one of those. He has a purity about him. And um, and that's probably why he didn't succeed. But he did because he nearly got another one. He did and he didn't. It is and it isn't. Oh, it's almost a, a little rhyme there. Uh, but yeah, do check it out because 
when I heard it again, it made I remember, it took me back to it had a sticky it had a stickiness about it. It was, you know, it was in my subconscious. It's like, oh, I remember this. Oh, so, yeah, and it was it was kind of nice to hear it again. But yeah, it's it's sad. Um, another one, another one leaves us. Seventy four, and um, you know, none of us are getting any younger. So yeah, do do go and check it out. In terms of rating, I give this a steady, a steady three worms out of five. That's three worms out of five. Again, thoroughly pleasant experience. You know, not it's not going to knock your socks off, but you really get to hear his voice and you know, and where he's coming from. This is you know, this is this is his very much his album, and it's great that John Wetton's on there as well, <laughs> which is a. Very, very interesting. You have that, yeah, that DNA from that band, uh, and it's always interesting to check out, you know, the solo works of, of these people. But yeah, thanks, Gordon. Thanks for everything, and uh, you know, do give this one a, a spin if you can find it. I don't, I don't know where you'd find it these days. I don't know if it is, is streamable. It might be streamable on Spotify or whatnot. Do go and check it out, but if not, go and listen to one of his other albums instead and raise a and raise a, a glass. And that's that. Thank you for watching. My name is Darren Lock. There's only one more thing left to say, and you know what that is, and that is Progon. <laughs>